Okay, so, 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 how men harass mentally ill women, apparently Japanese word for it, took over the internet. I love that. I love that. I love that title. I love everything about this title. And we're gonna watch it. This claim on this video covers sensitive topics surrounding mental illness and the weep community. This is a trigger warning. You've been warned, chat. Disclaimer, as there might be some people who will find this insensitive to people with actual mental illness, please note that this is just a video exploring the internet phenomenon, specifically in the weeb community. Mental illness is obviously a serious issue that Am must I be taken Hara? seriously, so if you are Manhara? sensitive to this topic, case, please keep this in mind as we go along the video or skip be. the video entirely. With that being said, let's begin. This is Amecha, the <gasps> central character of the game Needy Streamer Overload. She is a girl with all sorts of internal and external issues. I was one of the first games I played and she's when going to be I started making content creation. She is depressed again. and craves social validation. She is insecure, has no standards or ethics, only hell bent on getting popular so she doesn't get evicted. Like Tinkerbell, she needs attention or else she will die. This is Kanjo, oh a I've positive a figure in the from internet, him. a beacon of light in this dark and toxic suspect that we call social media. Someone who is selfless, promotes good health and positivity, someone who can do no wrong, and someone who will support you if no one else will. Unless, of course, if you treat her bad. Amechan yes. and Kanjel are actually the same person. Amechan and Kanjel are extremely game. attractive. I love this game. Video. This is Shiori, a VTuber from top VTuber agency Hololive. She is a VTuber that many people would call girlfriend material. She is goofy, she likes all sort of things, she reads books, she's more cultured than a lot of people liken themselves to be. She is Chat. Am I girlfriend material? familiar with the internet and she's this comfy goofball that just wants to have fun but when she got announced with this design certain demographics brainwashed themselves into thinking hey, this yo, was her actual design and when it so turned cool out she looking. wasn't as mentally deranged as her design like she would be they reacted by shouting <laughs> regardless people who stuck to she already realized that she is actually peculiar in her own way goofy and still fitting with the goth e-girl nerdy gf that her character design made people think shiori is extremely attractive there's yes. one more person i'd like to introduce well multiple people <laughs> actually and the reason yeah, i list all of these yeah. including those in the collage is because <laughs> these examples make up the three core types of menheras that yukari seko and minako kokichi in their 2022 paper titled mentally ill and cute <laughs> as hell yes ladies and gentlemen we're going to talk about menheras you like this, don't you? You I stop! Oh. <gasps> I but love that anime. Before we continue, let me introduce Honkai Star Rail. No. Legit, one of the most <laughs> compelling, highly produced games of all time. Hoyoverse just don't miss. No, honestly. you didn't see anything. Their games just end up getting awards, like the best game of the year award in the App Store, and Star Rail is no different. You are the trailblazer, a trash panda with a baseball bat meant to explore the cosmos and meet a lot of interesting characters along the way, with more than 30 of them being playable and extremely f***ing gorgeous. And this year, Star Rail is celebrating its first anniversary, and that means oh, you are it's getting yourself free year, pools fuck. and a lot of events to get even more pools. Yo! Right now, they have also perhaps the most compelling update since Bellabog. Penacony is a gorgeous map with very unique 1913 cartoon aesthetic. You're gonna love this update, I swear. But that's not all because I, I hate, I hate that cartoon stuff. One of their stuff. most I, interesting sorry, characters just it. dropped from the gacha, and it's basically the best time to play, honestly. Acheron is a mysterious and cold swordsman. And oh my god, Potato keeps going on so and on about her. There's also Aventurine, a finance bro. But if a finance bro was sexy and actually is generous and will look out for you by giving you shields. Again, because they just released a new update You're and it's their anniversary, it right there's tons upon tons of rewards <laughs> for you to go. Free content, free plays, rolls, free like rolls, such. free rolls, and even more free rolls. And you know what no, else will stuff. get you free rolls? By downloading the game in the description free and stuff. using these redemption codes for Acheron and Aventurine's launch dates. And I'm not kidding when I say that <laughs> this game is I'll give you guys the link right good. after. It's deeper and more complex I'll than its trailers and I'll give you guys the link right after betrays. the video. <laughs> so again, please check the game out. Add over. First of all, what is a Minhera anyway? Well, I mean, if you are already watching this video and follow my channel, you most likely know what it is. But to the uninitiated, it's basically a mentally ill person. 
But the term has an interesting origin that involves 2chan, but it's a term that no longer applies now. Because recently, the internet has pushed beyond that original definition and has added a little bit of extra. I love that anime. a bit more broader. It is so mentally now, ill. it's gotten so big that it it's so become mentally an aesthetic, Ill, I love a vibe. It. it doesn't have the same serious connotation that it used to, at least not that much. The concept of a menhera is now associated with cute or sexiness a lot of the time. Now, the definition pretty much includes all sorts of derangement, edginess, frequent leaks of intrusive on, talk, just say or anything that's already. quirky. Hell, even a certain fashion sense. Because of this, it's important to actually differentiate all these types of menheras and categorize them. Again, the paper published by Seiko in Kukichi has already given us a lot of great work to start with, so let's begin with that. According to the paper, and with recent observations, there are three types of major menhera tropes. All right. The sad girl, the mad woman, and the cutie. We will be covering some tropes that fall under these three major categories, so don't you worry, we Candidus have a lot of material sexy, absolutely agreed. The sad girl, as you might guess, is a girl that's sad. I guess no, just seriously. a depressed girl. The sad girl? girl is somebody who struggles with anxiety, low like, self-esteem, uh, like hopelessness, Sayori. and loneliness. But you might ask yourself, like what Sayori is so from attractive Doki Doki. about this? Well, this is a trope that's very common in media, where either a depressed woman or a depressed person is saved by the hero and or joy. heroine. A forlorn, beautiful girl who never gets anything she wants, stuck inside her Sad mind, bullied for the longest Sad. time, longingly wishing for that one person to look at her Aww. and treat her like a human being. Must In short, protect. it appeals to people's sense of ego or even people who wish to find shared Need vulnerability. Protect. Both stable and unstable men will come to like the sad girl, with the former having their masculine protective instincts coming in to wish to help and fix them, and the latter having somebody they can relate to and hopefully lick each other's wound. And a big reason why they this archetype has been peddled around by women who relate to the sad girl and men who like the sad girl is this interesting little character over here. This is Kurumi, otherwise known as Menhera Chan to a lot of people. Menhera Chan? And stickers of her got I don't think popular I've actually, in line like, and now emotes of her are used by an ungodly amount of Discord kitten. Menhera Chan started I've off as a diary her, but of sorts I've by the author on her, her little personal that website makes sense. until she received help from an editor to turn it into a natural manga. And the oh. quality of the manga is subjective in terms of quality and some of it might even come across as disturbingly insensitive to actual mental health issues but the aesthetic and the quirkiness of the character immortalized Kurumi-chan into the weeb culture icon that she is now. The lore behind it is pretty sad though. The author got bullied in school and socially Aww. withdrew. Again, Kurumi-chan was a diary or autobiography of sorts of the oh. author. So whatever feelings that this girl goes through in the manga and in the original text is also the same kind of feelings that the author went through. And she was around 14 years old They've seen her but didn't know her name made. either. The sad girl's suffering is the suffering of existence itself. If if you ever sat in a corner or on a table, <gasps> perhaps holding a pillow or staring into the ceiling, wishing that you were dead and that there is no point in, in living, you stop resisting those thoughts and fighting for anything that's worth it in life, in you've game. admitted defeat to the cold universe's relentless assault against anything that makes you happy. There's nothing more for you in the future. You've justified isolating yourself by saying that the world is gonna end anyway. Friendships don't matter because they all end. Relationships eventually turn into breakups. Physical touch is only temporary, but despite that, you still want those, but just can't participate. Cannot learn to bother the skills to get them. You completely and utterly withdrew into yourself. You've been stuck into this feeling for so long that the pain becomes numb. Perhaps you externalize your inner pain by drawing your own blood to feel something. Selfishly hoping for a calamity that would just end the world or that you get into an accident that kills you immediately. Something this existential is the reality of the sad girl. Holy it is something shit, that, that got wants deep to go real through, quick. But unfortunately, in this social climate, that a lot of people are all too familiar with the very Holy degree. shit! And you see, there are those people who, perhaps in their ego or genuine sympathetic nature, wish to save or fix this person. It is the most human and best reaction to do. However, one has to be careful and to take note. A flailing, drowning man drags and swims past their fellows in order to save themselves. It is not malicious, it is instinct. Saving a flailing, drowning man can sometimes end up with a savior drowned themselves. Aww. But not me, obviously. I no, can still obviously, save obviously. This is a bit yeah, of a stretch, but so. there's a subtrope under the sad girl that does not necessarily have all those dark and deep tones, but That's people like somewhat for, yeah. find the same sort of attraction to anyway. That subtrope would be the anxious girl. 
these are basically people that are extremely shy. And I hear you asking, Anxious. Hey, you stupid dumb rabbit, that's basically a dandere. No, it's not, you fucking oh. idiot, let me explain. A dandere is someone like Sawako Koronuma, Miyo Akiyama, and Hinata from Naruto. Pretty shy, but not necessarily socially uh, inept. The anxious girl is like someone like Kurumi? Bochi the Rock or oh, Komi yes. from Komi, Komi, Komi was her name. These are the girls who you kind of have yeah, to force I in order to engage anime, with people. By the way. And maybe like, extremely lonely growing up. Uh I watched most of season one from Komi-chan. I watched most of season one. And... How accurately it depicted my social anxiety was so insane. That was so insane. Like, it actually got social anxiety, like, really well represented. I felt... I felt really represented then. <laughs> like, Komi-chan is super cute. The anime and the character. Oftentimes, there's a smidge of depression and wanting for more in times when they are alone. And oftentimes, they don't even realize that they actually are very depressed or lonely and sad. Especially yeah. when they taste a bit of what they're missing but out Chishan on is so and cute only too. then realize that they may be more fucked up in degrees worse than they thought. Of course, they don't necessarily have to be depressed, but they do have to have a sense of longing as for companionship. But she's just too socially so, anxious to pursue yeah, it. So and same. people like this trope because some people relate to this type of person. And at the same time, a lot of men like to have a very cute, very socially anxious person because if they could just penetrate the walls of that one girl they then they are in there alone with that <laughs> when person. she glitches there is no competition it's just the you, glitch that girl and nobody else some even like it because if they are able to do that, they cement themselves as a core and important figure in this person's life. They made an impact that, in the foreseeable future, cannot be beaten. And what is a greater desire than that? What is humanity's greatest desire for each other than to protect someone and to be fondly remembered by others, whether romantically or platonically? Alright, now, now let's take a look at the other tropes. The Mad Woman unlike the sad girl, is someone whose appeal is based uh, off of her madness. Now, this broad ads, definition guys. opens up a lot of specific subtropes, with the unifying factor being that they are obsessed with something or someone, often in a the romantic way, and are very psychopathic and sociopathic the in their means of getting what they want or expressing something. Such means include self-harming, emotional or even physical harassment, blackmail, stalking, and all sorts I can of fix not her. so I can socially fix her. I can fix behaviors her. that are adjacent to those. Again, this is very broad, and we can already categorize a few key notable subtropes that are very yandere, common yandere. and popular in Japanese yandere. and sometimes even Western media. Yandere. I call them the yandere, yes. the girl boss, and the weird. The, girl boss. the yandere is something that most likely don't need that much explaining. It's probably <laughs> the easiest right and most popular subtrope of the mad woman. It is someone that's obsessed and insane. Literally insane for someone to a point that they could do Eeky. anything to get them including again But not limited to murdering the competition or anyone that gets in the way of their relationship Even their own family Eeky. members and often they would even kill themselves or the person that they like if they realize that they don't have Any more chances with that person no matter what they do the appeal of the yandere trope is that they are very unhinged and crazy I fucking for the love people Mirai they Nikki. like Such whether that anime. insanity be subtle or explicit either way anime, a few people man. in the internet like the idea and the fantasy without necessarily wanting to take that sort of relationship IRL. This insanely hot and cute anime girl that's way above your league, insanely crazy for you to a point of being that murderous. That one is so that's insane. I watched that on release. Some the fact that someone desires them that badly is a massive appeal to one's ego that or one even a nice know. fantasy to warm up someone's cold, lonely darkness. Especially when it's a yandere, someone who doesn't care about your flaws and insecurities and is still obsessed with you regardless. The girl boss is different though, because they have some of the traits of the yandere, but imagine if the yandere was a bit See more you, Lisa. And Thanks is for hanging able out. to control their emotions. Better. Hot. However, yes. romance doesn't have to be involved with the girl boss. The girl boss, unlike the yandere, who brute forces herself and is very oh, aggressive she like the type that's gonna love, step on you? is very subtle. She won't murder anyone in cold blood. She'll assassinate those people or just get the hitman. They don't scream or threaten you to love them. They convince you that there is no one you, else in the world other than them that will love them as much as they can. They won't emotionally pressure you. They'll manipulate the circumstances around you to make you do what they want. They are manipulators, but in a different way 
more implicit way. Always two steps ahead of uh, anyone. Someone who has tamed their insanity and psychopathy and manifesting their derangement in intelligent ways. I love her. And they are especially dangerous, her. more dangerous even than the Yandere. The Yandere might kill you or everyone else around you, but the girl boss can do worse. These days, the girl boss girl are shown boss. as very powerful and authoritative <laughs> figures, term. showing up as a mastermind type of character who shows interest in a particular person, whether that be for their own personal reasons or other ulterior or sinister ones. People like the girl boss because they're often portrayed as smoking hot, confident, intelligent, mature women who can be as crazy as the Yandere, but without you. the explicit traits that may turn people off that the Yandere has. And people I quote, like step on me, mommy. Women, especially in this day and age, where people like a woman who can take care of herself and essentially it's a cute mommy. Woman. <laughs> Lastly, we now have to go over the cutie. The cutie is... Uh, there's a lot of layers to this cutie. trope, and that is very hard to explain in I was the cutie fact, I mentally ill in this you. one. Yeah. Oh, Ame-chan. Ah, I see. Do you get it? Yes. I'm sure you do. Basically, uh, yes. the cutie is a trope that embodies sick, cute aesthetic. An aesthetic that incorporates very cutesy stuff with dark and disturbing themes. Putting in elements like bandages, I hate that wounds, I love that trope. knives, like, I hate... eye patches, pills, and the contrast <laughs> I hate is what makes it work. It is what makes it so intriguing. In now, unlike the other tropes that don't even try to be appealing, well, sometimes, the cutie is quite the opposite. They intentionally make themselves look appealing and cute, juxtaposing their so dark themes. Some to disturb the viewers, some to intrigue, some to hide their mental illness behind the cuteness, perhaps even a little bit of all three. There's even a cliche where the girls in this subtrope like Hello Kitty, especially Kurumi. Regardless of why they do it, it's working. But to expand on and add my own observation to this trope, I would actually like to include the Jirai K or Landmine girl fixed. to be part of this. She's perfect because as I she is. From the name itself, the That's cutie a is a trope too. that shows off their mental illness with having a cutesy spin. To a certain extent, it even applies to goths and even Lolita culture somewhat because of their really? similarly strange tendencies in media and their associations. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than that, but we're not getting into that in this video. The Jirai K culture is so popular that one. overseas people actually do like participating in the trend and the fashion style without necessarily understanding the culture behind it. And I don't blame them God, should because do in the eyes of anyone that oh isn't God. brain rotted with weeb stuff, mental illness is probably far from the first thought when they see this. But to anybody yeah. who is in this culture deep enough, you look at those sets of clothes and this aesthetic and alarm bells are gonna start blaring. Perhaps even your boner getting. In Western cultures, certain parts of this trope could even include the whole mascara dripping down the face and people still but looking hot and attractive though. kind of thing. And the cutie aesthetic actually also works in the West. The point of the cutie Ooh. is that they're a mess who makes Ooh, the sad. fact that they're a mess yeah. Appear or up. to hide their mental illness under the cuteness. Thank and you, for the part, you just works. subscribe. It is designed to be cute. It's supposed to look like a trap, but while even knowing that it's a trap, a lot of people are probably willing to step into that trap. And the subtrope of the cutie is actually something that oh, a lot of people um... might find familiar. The quirky girl are people who are different from other quirky. girls. And I mean actually quirky oh, girls, by the way. Not the not he those, he not quirky. Not like other girls crowd that both that you one. and I probably have a bad opinion of. They're people yeah. that are just plain weird or does not have any filter and lets their intrusive thoughts a little too much. Sometimes they just like unconventional things or have unusual Chat. Am I slightly quirky in that regards that he's just explaining now? Holy shit. Oh, no. I'm scared. Hobbies and passions. Oh, this no. This is where the goth and the Lolita oh, no. culture kind of muddies the Midwork water. can stay, but, but I like your stuff. I'll catch them up later. They actually Thank do you. have mental disorders. Could have ADHD, Enjoy autism, work. or actual schizos, among many other disorders. And it just leaks out without them intending we to do We need a so. male version of this video. Now, do these tropes, I mean, all of these tropes, mm mean that people are romanticizing mental illness when associating themselves with the cutie? Kinda. Yeah. That's why a lot of people pretend they're mentally ill or exaggerate their symptoms or, or diagnose themselves with all sorts of illnesses because some people genuinely think that like mental illnesses world. are fashionable, like a reason to stand out. It makes them different. People like to be unique, to be strange, even if it comes with the cost of downplaying or trivializing how serious or outright 
life ruining some of these mental disorders actually are. But, but because a lot of people though. like to watch it, it got popular. And if there's a demand, there but... will be supply. Some people will yes. see how someone can get passionate or fixated over certain things and start yapping and call it autistic or think it's cute and funny. Some people will see so many hair breakdowns on the internet oh, no. and how He's not calling taking us out meds chat. is cute and funny. People think that's oh, desirable no. even. Both men and women, some of them at least. But one has to wonder, how did it start being desirable and fashionable? How and why did people start finding <laughs> menheras and mental illness <laughs> attractive? the male loneliness video. You might have heard the phrase, I can fix her, or it's more or less known <laughs> counterpart, I could fix her, but honestly, whatever the fuck is wrong with her is way hotter. You see, <laughs> they're a step, well, more than a step away from the safe and conventional. Vanilla sucks to many people. And look, no shame on the vanilla enjoyers out there. I'm just saying that in this <laughs> age of desensitization bad. and this rapid chase for thrilling and digital sensations, vanilla is a dying taste. They're never gonna go away, but its followers are gonna get cold in the future because vanilla people peeps. are now getting exposed to so much extreme stuff at such a young age that they'll seek out more stimulating things. This applies to people's taste in men and women. More and more people out there are gonna start looking for the unhinged, head the unpredictable, Aww. for the strange, the macabre, for the quirky. Oh, this the is legitimately addictive. And that's the so Manhera weird. becoming an entire genre is quite literally the proof that that's the future we're heading into. And the fact that this isn't even the peak of the popularity of this trope is scary. Because in multiple pink? ways, the Manhera is fucked up as a genre. Again, it trivializes too many sensitive topics and I plays know, it up just, as something else that it's yeah. not supposed to. It has its own societal setbacks if it does get more popular. It has... Uh, regarding it, and there's an IRL that just, um... You all heard of the uh, Yandere girl from Japan some months back? Or maybe it was even last year, I don't remember. Maybe a year back or so. That actually unalived her boyfriend? And people went like mad over her as in, like she hot, etc. And like comments like she could stab me. It's kind of stuff. <laughs> like it's all good when it's an anime girl and it's 2D and it's not real. But IRL is it, it, like uh you need a rubber room. <laughs> you need a rubber room full of rats. That's what you fucking need. That that's what you need. Do that a lot with criminals. Oh god, I can't. She was she was good looking. She was. Oh hell no. You do need a rubber room. Yep, yep, yep. We do need to bring back rubber rooms, man. As other elements that fundamentally disturbs my principles as a YouTuber, if you can believe that. But I still can't help but consume it. I can't help but yeah. wish to spread the Manhera gospel to my fellows. It's a guilty Legit. pleasure, but to many it others, is, it it's is. not a guilty pleasure. Sometimes, it's all they have. It is oh, no. inherent in men to care and protect for someone. The more That's someone needs such a to be movie. cared and protected, the more this instinct flares up. And what needs to be more cared and protected than a Manhera? Especially when it's fiction. Especially when it's fantasy. See, the fantasy element of the Menhera is what oh, I'd yeah. argue is the main reason why this Thank is you so for the popular. Follow. There is a disturbing rise I'm of free. male loneliness these days. <laughs> Not just in Japan oh, or in the US, crime. but Shut in, hikikimori, neat, whatever you want to call it's it. It's our and boy woman cough emoji. And also see a lot of these Instagram <laughs> models or femcells tweeting and saying how they hate men or wish that men should be this or oh that God, or have yeah. incredibly high standards or whatever. I'm not agreeing it's with that, but a lot of men have these echo chambers or get into all sorts of rabbit holes. Heck, some of these rabbit holes include stuff like AI chatbots and whatnot to, uh, oh, to yeah. substitute these companionships. And these rabbit holes have them ending up with two sorts of conclusions. Either this is better than oh, the actual women that they see on social he media or that they don't have any other choice. Again, you look at women who are mentally ill oh my as a God. probably depressed person being Guys, is that school days? Is that school days? Oh my god, school days is such a... Oh, it's so awful! I could go on and on and on and on and on and on about how bad school days is. Holy shit. And my fucking ex loved that anime. Because he was... I tried AR girlfriend, I canceled it because god damn it. 
cute and having this fantasy that they can be crazy and quirky for everything that is school and most days. especially for you and you end up finding that relatable Butchie. and desirable someone uh, who can understand you perhaps uh, school days is the best. It ain't even that. It ain't even that. It's the worst of the worst. For me, that's the worst anime ever made. Holy shit, I could not bear. The main character sleeps around with every girl in the fucking school, and in the end, there's something about he got someone pregnant, and then the other woman got all mad because she got him together with a guy he wanted to be together with, but she had a crush on him, and then that other woman uh, started killing her, and then sp spilled her guts open? Bro! That anime is so shit! It is so shit! Oh my god! Don't watch it. It's not a good watch. If you want to see mentally ill... Anime wo chigurashi no na kokoro ni? 10 out of 10. High school to me, expect the killing part. Was that rental girlfriend? Do you mean rental girlfriend? I actually enjoyed season 1. I haven't seen season 2. I actually enjoyed season 1 of rental girlfriend. Oh, do you mean the. Oh, so based on a visual novel, I believe. I believe so too! But at least the anim anime of it was Perhaps so someone trash. someone to lick each other's wound with, try to fix each other. Some people even find them in hell. Sorry, let me go back on that. Right? My ex... My fucking ex. That piece of garbage. That piece of garbage used that anime as an example of being in a love triangle while he was together with me. But apparently he had another woman's like interest and that why he related so much to school days excuse you excuse the fuck you like hello <laughs> how, this piece of garbage said school days is so good that he relates to it <laughs> Oh, the pain! For you, and you Ugh. end up finding that relatable and desirable. Someone who can understand you. Perhaps That's someone so to lick yes. each other's wound with, try to fix each other. Some people even find the Menhera as having more of an interesting personality than a lot of women that they see online do. Some feel as if they don't have any shot with other stable women, so they go for the mentally what unstable ones about? because they're more attainable. In a way, some men essentially... But yep, and about mentally ill women on the internet and 2D mentally ill women. <laughs> That's what we yep, and about. She didn't end the love triangle. I know, right? I know, right? But that's what he called it. That's what he called it. Before I knew he cheated on me. <laughs> A piece of shit. To be fair, it wasn't that quote-unquote big cheating it was unloyalty he kissed someone else right i still call it cheating piece of shit fucking piece of shit holy shit and that piece of crap that guy that guy he said he had depression and all that shit he was never diagnosed first of all and me who was actually diagnosed with depression and all that kind of shit like Let's say in the past I didn't take that much care of my apartment back then. And he, he fucking uh, didn't understand it. He didn't understand it, but hey, he's depressed too. And he, he understands depression and he's mentally ill. But I'm, I, I'm the one that's weird. I, I'm, I'm just lazy. I'm the lazy one. I'm the lazy one. Mm, mm, mm. Think that the menheras are the low hanging fruit that they can reach, the only fruit that they can reach, the ones that are taken advantage more easily. And that's not too uncommon these days. The desire to care for someone perverse, the desire for attention and love twisted, the desire to feel taken to the extreme. This is essentially the menhera. All of these sentiments come mm. from the fascination and intrigue. It's a trope Slept that like no a longer nice. is even a hey, trope anymore. Look, man, the combination of people like Yuno Gasai and Yandere's as a you whole, Hamechan and all other cute mentally ill people 
It all led to having the Menhera and its subtropes be more than a trope, but an entire genre. To summarize yes, it's what a good I'm genre. Saying, the reason why there's such a massive supply of Menheras in media is because there's a massive demand for it. By lonely men, by depressed men, that, and there's women who participate in that supply because it looks fucking cute and adorable. But there are actually mentally ill women who Don't find call me out like that. relatable that do this. And, uh, well, let me look at this. The Menhera could be looked stop at calling as an me out. the mentally ill to be confident and beautiful. Like, the people... Chad, I don't like how he's calling me out. No. Chad. No. Ah. It's okay, Kitsu. Hidden from Thusun one gifted a tier one <laughs> subscription to Irish underscore crime. Thank you, Hidden. Oh, let's see. Yay, five over five. Yay! Party! Kisses boy. Kisses boy. Well, they aspire to be. Either to seek out attention or draw people into their trap or to genuinely imitate Such the types of people that they admire. That's true. This made Needy Streamer overload the cultural explosion <laughs> that it was. Have you any idea what this game did to mentally ill women online, to the Yan core community, and even to some of the pretenders? All I have to say is that Amechan and Kinjil is the Ryan Gosling of mentally ill women. So, for some women, if they can't get but anything so done in life when they're I can depressed, fix her. they might as well look cute and sexy when they're suffering and crying. I can fix her! Literally, the first ending I got with Amechan uh, was just doing the dirty dirty non-stop and she got disinterested in streaming. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first ending I got with Amit-chan. 